Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma LaFave and today we're gonna to be practicing how to achieve the softness of a light wash as well as color blends and color bleeds. So let's jump right in and start. Okay, so today I'm gonna to be showing you how to create beautiful light washes and create those beautiful color bleeds that really make a piece nice and soft. So we're gonna be doing a couple test runs and then we will do a nice, really soft kind of floral leafy piece um, that's just really relaxing, but also a really good drill to kind of practice and master. So I'm painting in my Etcher Lab cold press watercolor sketchbook today. I have my Winsor Newton professional watercolors. I have my Emma Lefebvre craft mode brushes, water, paper, towel. And I also have this pad of artist off paper, which is not great paper, <laughs> but I also kind of wanted to see if I could explain it on this paper, just in case you are working with cheaper paper, because this is a struggle um, that might happen with cheaper paper. You really want to work on better quality paper when you're trying to do color bleeds. And I'm going to try and show you the different, but also how to work on this paper. But first, we're just going to play around and I'm going to show you what I mean. So when I ever say create a light wash to start, what I'm saying is to create a light value of a color. So if we look at our color scale, I'm just going to go over all of this pretty quickly if I can. I'm going to grab some permanent rows here. This is a dark value, okay? It's a nice and saturated color. And in a bunch of my beginner videos, I have shown you how to create um, a gradient scale going from a dark value to a lighter value. You can kind of go continuously just by adding a bit more water, or you can do little color swatches by dipping your brush in your water, running against the side, getting a lighter value, doing it again. You're constantly taking off more pigment with each dip in the water. So when I say a light value, I mean one of the values that are on here or a light wash. Now you can do it this way, but you might want to start with a light value and you don't want to have to create a value scale to get to a light value. So here I have a color and what I want to do ultimately is water it down so I can get a light value. So I'm just going to clean off my brush and I'm just gonna add a bunch of water to this color, whatever color you already have in your palette. If you don't have it in a mixing well yet, bring some color over to your mixing well and add a bunch of water. Okay, you can test to see if it's a light enough value for you already, which it's decent, but if I want it a bit lighter, I'm gonna wash off my brush and add a bit more water. Okay, just to test and see if that's the light value I want. Okay, so we're gonna start with a light value like this. Now, one thing that's really tricky about making a light value of something, since we're adding all this water, we end up with a ton of water on our brush. And if you're working with really cheap paper, you're gonna bring that water and light wash pigment filled brush over to your cheaper paper and it's gonna create kind of this pooling effect. Let me see if I can just show you what I mean. And this is where we can run into some trouble. Okay, so you've added all this water to your, your pigment and you bring it over here. This is actually, I'm using a smaller brush so I'm not having that big of a, a problem with it. But you have the swatch and if you tilt it to one side, you can see it's pooling there. And that's gonna be a problem from when we're trying to add a darker pigment or a color bleed. So when you have something like this, what you want to do, wash off your brush, dry it on your paper towel, and pull up some of that water, okay? You want, ultimately, the goal is to have the same amount of wetness over the whole surface that you're painting, so you don't have one area that's more wet than the other or one area that's more dry than the other, because that's when you're gonna run into your problems with color bleeds, okay? So in order to check and see if it's kind of all the same amount of wetness, pick up your paper, tilt it, okay? If it's pooling, you're gonna wanna lift up some of that color with your brush, but also you're gonna to wanna to check for a sheen. A sheen is this. See that kind of glare you get off of it? That's kind of showing you where the water is and if it's all the same amount of wetness. I'm seeing a tiny little pool here, which is not too big of a deal, but I'm just gonna dry off my brush and I might just move it around a bit. Okay, and that's gonna help you. Okay, so back to this paper. We've created our light wash. So to, in order to prevent a pooling effect, what I do sometimes is I'll create my light wash 
And if my brush is like totally saturated with water and pigment, I will dab it on my paper towel or I'll wash it off and dab it on my paper towel. So I'm going in with kind of like a dry, not a completely dry, but a semi dry brush and then I'm picking up the color so I don't have as much water and pigment on my brush. Okay, so for this thing that we're doing today, we're just gonna be creating some petals, okay? Just some, you can do leaves, petals, and we're just gonna be trying to focus on creating those soft, light wash petals like that, okay? Again, look for pooling. If it's pooling too much, just dab your paintbrush on your paper towel, pick it up, and then what I want you to do is go back in with some more color. So I'm gonna grab more pigment, a darker, darker value. I'm gonna wash off my brush, I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to get a peachy color. Okay, and again, if I have too much water on my brush, just dab it on your paper towel, and I'm gonna to touch a little piece you can do the top or the side, whatever you want, okay? And this is gonna create really beautiful soft petals and it's a beautiful effect when you're creating some soft looking flowers, okay? So let's do a few of these all around, little petals, really focusing on that light wash. See how light you can get it? Sometimes it will look dark or wet. I'm just gonna make sure it's dispersed well, there's no puddles. Grab a bit more of that darker pigment and just touch a little part of it, okay? Those two are touching, that's fine. I'm gonna do two at a time. If you're working on cheaper paper, you might wanna just do one petal at a time because cheaper paper will dry faster 100% cotton paper will stay wet longer. Okay, and you can just add that darker color wherever you like. Now, if it's starting to look a little wonky and you don't really like the way it's looking, wash off your brush, dry it, take all that water and pigment off, and move it however you like. You can just move that color to kind of clean it up. Okay, let's try and work with an even lighter wash this time. So I'm really adding more water here. Wash off my brush, dry it, just to make sure I'm not taking up a lot of pigment. Now this looks like it's barely there. I'm gonna try and zoom in a bit more for you. But when we add a little bit of a color bleed, let's even add like a darker petal beside it. Have it bleed into the next. And just kind of experiment with light washes and color bleeds like that. Okay, we could even use a different color next. Let's wash off our brush. I'm gonna grab some sap green. Again, make sure there's not a lot of water on your brush. If you need to, wash it off, dry it, then pick up your color. I know you couldn't see that. And then touch just gently. Okay, we're trying to work on the softness of the color bleeds. And you can do the same thing with your leaves too. Okay, so can you tell by the leaf here there's a bit of pooling? So if I add a bit of darker color, it may create a weird bloom. So I'm just gonna dry off my brush on my paper towel and then move the pigment around so it's evenly wet everywhere. I'm gonna grab some darker pigment and touch it there. And if it's not moving very much, I might not have a lot of water on my brush, so I might just add a little tiny bit of water. Okay, this has a lot to do with water control. This is a great practice for water control. Okay, and it also helps if you're using a smaller brush. I want you to think smaller brush, less amount of water, bigger brush, larger amount of water. It just makes sense, right? If you have a larger brush, it's gonna carry more water. So for this, I'm using a size six, which I think really helps. Um, but just be aware of that. Okay, so let's just play around a bit more. Let's do some leaves. I'm gonna grab some, let's make a pretty like eucalyptus color. So I'm gonna grab some hooker's green dark. My palette's so messy. It's all good though. I'm gonna grab some dioxazine purple. 
and I'm going to grab a bit of turquoise. Okay. A bit more purple, I think. More of a grayish color. Okay, and then I want to create a light wash. So you can add a bunch of water to your palette. Another way I like to do it, which I find is just faster, and once you kind of get the feeling of how much water you have on your brush, you just kind of know after a while, I will just take it off like that, run it against the side, and I'll just start painting. That's how I create a light wash most of the time, just because I've had a bit more experience with the feeling of it. Um, and if that's too dark, I'll wash off my brush, I'll dry it on my paper towel, and then I'll just pick up some of that pigment and push it around to make it even lighter. Okay, so I'm going to create another leaf here. Okay, I see a little bit of darkness right there. Just dry off my brush just to pick it up a bit. And then I'll go back in with my darker pigment that's just on my palette of what we made. I'll just touch the base. Another trick with um, trying to do a color bleed like that, if you do your stem and you end at that point, so you're going towards the leaf, when you pick up your brush, you're gonna get a little pool. Okay, so typically what I try to do if I'm working on lighter paper, just because you don't want that pool because then you're going to get the unevenness of wetness and you're going to get a little bloom there. I will try and start here with my little color bleed and then drag it away. Okay, because then you're dragging that color and that water away. But if you go towards there, you're going to have a little bit of, like if you have too much water on your brush, you're going to have a little bit more trouble and you're going to have that little pool there. Okay. I know this looks weird. My stem was like totally off. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, a little bit of a pool there. I'm just gonna dry off my brush a bit. Tap the bottom and then drag it away. Okay, I know it looks a little weird. And also when you're tapping that darker color in, really make sure you don't have a lot of water and pigment on your brush. Okay, if you're unsure and you're still learning, always tap it on your paper towel just to take any excess off because if you go into there with too much water and you try and do like a color bleed it just might overtake it again this is better paper this is 100% cotton paper so it's a little bit forgiving but I'm gonna now switch to my artist loft paper and do a couple more of these to show you kind of how to work your paper to your advantage okay so my artist loft paper it's really cheap not great. Um, it's a lot smoother in texture too, and it doesn't hold water as well. You're gonna find that when you're working on cheaper papers, the pigment and the water tend to sit on top. So I have a little bit of that eucalyptus color on here, and I'm just gonna go around. It's really smooth, and you can kind of see that pooling effect. Okay, so what you need to do in this sense, see how it's darker there, darker there. If I were to leave this, actually, I'm gonna leave this one just to show you how it's gonna dry. Um, and then I'm gonna show you how to actually do it. So I'm just gonna do one beside it. Okay, so I'm making my little eucalyptus leaf and I'm getting that pool. What I wanna do, dry off my brush and continue to move it around until it's kind of all the same color. Okay, all the same amount of wetness. Okay, and then when I want to go back in and touch with a bit darker pigment, I'll show you here. I'll touch there and then drag it away. See how it made it darker? It's going to be a little pool here. It's a little darker, but I'm going to drag it away. And because this one has a little bit less water, it's going to work better than this. Okay, so whenever you're doing a leaf or a petal on cheaper paper, you really want to disperse that um, or drag around that water and color to make sure it's all the same amount of wetness. Now you can run into this problem when you're doing leaves. So I'm just gonna grab some sap green here. And we do our um, light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. See where that ends off? You end up with a pool here, again, light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. You're dragging all that water to one end of the leaf and when it dries, I'm gonna let that one dry and show you, 
you end up with a pool. So now I'm going to show you how to do it properly on cheaper paper. So you're going to do your same light, heavy, light, light, heavy, light. Okay. And see how I have that little pool there. What I'm going to do now is try and move it all around, make it evenly wet. You just have to work a little bit harder on your cheaper paper. Okay. And if it still seems like there's a bit too much water or color on there, dry it off on your paper towel and continue to just move it around. So it dries evenly. Okay. You can already see with this one drying, see it's wet here and dry here and you're getting that weird bloom. Let me see if I can add a bit more of my darker green to the tip here so I can get a nice color bleed. Okay. Again, I'm dragging it away. So the color's going this way rather than into it and going to kind of go everywhere here. It's just going to sit because it dries really fast. Okay. Let's try with a lighter wash of this green because that's pretty, pretty saturated. Okay. So again, your heavy light pressure, light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. It's really light, right? Again, we have those pools. Draw off your brush a little, move the color around until it is all evenly wet. And if there's a little bit of a pool, again, dry off your brush, move it around, grab your darker pigment, touch the bottom and then drag it away, drag it away. If there's a little pool there. You can always fix it. Dry off your brush. Just kind of lift it up with your dry brush add a little bit more color here too. Okay. This one didn't turn out too, too bad, but you can see there's a little bit of a bloom on this side rather than this one where it's like kind of like evenly colored. Um, the color didn't, when I added that darker color, it didn't do too much on this one. It is harder and tougher to work on cheaper paper. This one will work nicely. Um, but it's just something you have to play around with. So do these drills, and just keep practicing creating your light washes and creating your color blooms. Let's, or your color bleeds. Let's do some petals on the cheaper paper. So again, just grabbing my light wash here. Maybe I'll do two at a time. Okay. I see a bit of a difference in the color. So I'm just moving it all around till it's all kind of the same color and also trying to keep it wet for as long as I can. So I can go back in with some more color, dry off my brush a bit. Now go grab more of that color, touch the base. It's exploding a bit, but it doesn't look like it's a puddle. If it was a puddle, let's see if I can make a puddle. If it was a puddle like that, wash off your brush, dry it really quick pick it up. Or if it's like too much of a puddle, you can really just pick it up with your paper towel and then go over with clean water and kind of like a dry brush and just move it all around until it's all evenly wet and try again. Pick up less pigment and water on your brush. Okay. You just got to work a little bit better. All right. So there's kind of some drills to practice. Now let's create a really soft piece. And with this, we're also going to, we're going to do these little color bleeds with the light wash, but also sometimes adding, um, more like a darker value. Let me just show you really quickly here. I'm just going to add some green. I'm going to do like a little leaf stem leaf thing. Okay. So here we go. Here's our leaf adding darker value leaves and mixing them in with the lighter wash just creates great contrast and it's really beautiful to look at. So I'm going to do a medium value leaf here. Then I'm going to grab some more pigment. And I'm going to do a darker value here and it's going to touch that one. Okay. Actually that lighter value is leaf is kind of bleeding into the darker one. Again, 
wash off my brush and just try to make it all the same amount of wetness. Let's do another light color leaf here. Just switching it up. Moving that water around. Grab a little bit of that darker value. Just have it bleed in there a little bit. Another light wash one you can have it touch. Really, it's a lot of it's about water control and how much water and pigment you have on your brush. If it's going too much, just dry off your brush a bit and just kind of move it around. Darker. We're just kind of going back and forth with the darkness and the lightness of the pigments. Okay. And it just kind of creates a beautiful contrast. And it's super relaxing to do once you get the hang of it and it's not frustrating to you anymore. Okay, so now we're gonna create a little cute little piece that we can paint together and just enjoy. Okay, so now that we have practiced our light wash and our little color bleeds, we're gonna do a really nice soft floral piece. So I'm just gonna wet up my brush and use my color that I already had here. You can use whatever color you want. I'm actually gonna wet up more colors in my palette because I wanna have them ready to go for when I need them. Um, and we'll start. So I'm gonna start off with this light wash of the pink. My brush was dry, so I don't need to dab it too much. And I'm actually gonna do kind of like a, a different kind of petal. I go around like this. It's very, very light, very, very light wash. I'll do a couple petals at a time because my paper can stay wet a little, little a little bit longer so I'm not too worried about it drying but if you have cheaper paper remember just work one petal at a time I'm gonna make sure that the water is all dispersed evenly and go back in with some more color especially towards the center and add those little color bleeds I'm gonna dab a little bit off and maybe just a little bit to the tips like so okay I want to keep it really nice and soft Let's do some more petals. Do about five. And this is just a top down perspective. So you're gonna see all the petals kind of the same perspective. Like that. And then one more over here, like so. And it does not have to be a perfect petal by any means. Make sure there's no pooling. Just a little there and there. Nice soft leaf or <laughs> flower. All right, now I'm gonna do um, I'm going to do a leaf and I'm actually going to have it touching part of the flower. So I dragged it away. So there's a little color bleed there. I'm going to do little leaves kind of coming off these stems. Again, working on my light wash. Maybe this one will touch this petal a little bit. And I don't really have a plan for my composition. I'm just kind of painting, which maybe I should have <laughs> come up with an idea. You know what, I might add a little bit of brown to my leaf. We can actually just, this one I can see is starting to dry, so I'm gonna wash off my brush, dry it a little bit, and I'm just gonna make sure it's all the same amount of wetness again. Okay part of that dried. And remember, you can tell because you can see that like shine on it. Okay, a little bit of brown, maybe on the there a bit. Just 
tapping a little bit here and there. Again, just dry off your brush in between if there's too much pigment like that. And might grab a little bit more of that sap green just to make it a little bit brighter. And you can even do these color bleeds with different colors. It doesn't have to just be a darker wash of the same color. You can add other colors if you like. Have fun with it. Let's do another thing of leaves over here. Just doing little stems. light wash and with this you can kind of take your time you don't have to rush too too fast just enjoy it do one leaf or petal at a time and just enjoy the process Got a little bit of brown You could tap a little bit of blue into your leaves, like whatever you want. A little bit of green, a little bit of brown, whatever you want. Have fun with it. A bit more brown. You can even have a little bit of a brown leaf there. Like so. Okay, let's do another flower here. We'll do like a side view. So we'll have longer petals on this side. I'm just adding more water to my brush because I can feel it's a little bit hotter in my room too. Um, I'm under studio lights so that makes a big difference. Kind of get to know the climate of your room. And you can just test that out by just painting and seeing how your paper reacts and your paint reacts. And my little color bleeds here. Like so, it's looking a little bit weird. Just gonna dry off my brush and just move it around to where I want it. So, then I'm going to do some shorter petals right here, just so it looks like it's a different perspective. This one can come behind this one without touching it. You can touch if you want, it doesn't matter, but it's already dry, so it might look a little weird. and just really working on the softness of these petals. Let's create some soft leaves coming out this way. I can see a little bit of pooling there. Again, just gonna move it around, move it around. Grab a little bit of brown, a little bit more of my green, like so. I'm going to have some more leaves coming out that way. in that brown. A little bit more of that green. Take off some of that pigment if it's a bit too much. We can do some yellow. I'm just going to grab some cadmium yellow 
I'm just gonna wash off my brush to make it really nice and light. And we can just do like some petals this way. Again, just working on those soft bleeds. Okay, and going back in with a bit more color, right? These can just be like bud shapes or like leaves or something. They don't have to be an actual flower. Again, go back in there. You can even grab a little bit of orange if you wanted. Remember, change up the color. This one's pooling a bit, so I'm just gonna move it around. A little bit of orange. Like so. And just creating pieces like this is a really good drill. I'm gonna grab maybe a darker green this time for these stems. My perline green. And again, I'm just gonna touch and drag away. Touch and drag away. <laughs> and my son's crying for some reason. And I'm gonna do some little leaves here. Okay, it's having a moment. Let's grab a little bit of blue just for fun and pop it in some of those leaves. Like that. Grab a little bit more darker color. And just have fun adding it in there. Okay, let's do some coming maybe down this way and then we'll do some more greenery and stuff that way. Drag the stem away. You can touch a little bit and drag it away. Touch, drag it away. Touch, drag it away. Do a little leaf here. Nice and light. some darker bits of green just to get a little bit of a nice contrast there okay so now let's do some more leaves I really like these bluish colored leaves so I think I'm gonna do some more of these so I'm just gonna show you the perline green that I'm using it's right here I love this color green you can always mix a dark green by doing dioxazine purple and hooker's green Take some of that off and we're just going to do some like eucalyptus i think let's take off some of that color starting with our light wash i'm just going to do some rounded petals like so I really like the way that kind of cobalt blue was added to these leaves, so I think I might do it to the eucalyptus too. So I'm just gonna grab some cobalt blue and kind of just pop it in there. I think it looks really pretty while it's still wet. It's a really nice color. Like that. Grab a bit more of that perline green. Or you can even do like a brown, like a burnt umber the stem okay and we can even do some darker leaves for a bit of contrast so I might just pop in some darker pearly and green leaves in there like so see how that looks so nice against the light wash the contrast just play around and see what works. Okay, I'm gonna do my light wash again. Let's have some over here. We'll just do like two leaves 
Maybe a little bit there. Really work on those light washes. See how light you can get them and how soft you can make your paintings. Darker purple and green. So, so lastly, just for the center of these petals here, I'm just going to grab a little bit of yellow ochre and just kind of just do some little dotted stamens just to fill it out. But there you go. After practicing, you know, working on those light washes and color bleeds, you can make beautiful, really soft florals that are perfect for any occasion. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for even more. Have a great day guys. Bye.